Shalom Havarim, James Trim here, <clears throat> and today I want to talk to you about Ephesians chapters, uh, chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, and I want to show you some things that I'll bet you didn't know about this particular passage of Ephesians. But before we get started, I need to ask everybody to please donate to support this work. Uh, we just discovered that we have, we just learned that we've lost a $1,000 a month donor. Uh, the individual simply can't donate anymore because, uh, at least at this point, because the uh, their business is having a difficult time. And so they were helping us with that amount and they can't do it anymore. Uh, that uh, That's put a real strain on our uh, support here. Donations have already been low and so that kind of puts us so that puts us in some real trouble so if you can donate please donate today um, for those that don't know my wife is disabled and chronically ill and I am her, uh, she suffers chronic pain and I'm her caretaker and of course uh, you also make possible the research and work that's done behind these videos the yeshiva classes that we are teaching online if you're interested in those, there's a link in the video description to the our page about the yeshiva. Um, and uh, we're also doing work on Hebrew and Aramaic origins of New Testament books. And we have a lot of information uh, about that that we've accumulated in research I've done over the last 35 or more years. And uh, we're working to restore the original Hebrew and Aramaic text. Uh, so um, uh, just uh, donate, donate, donate if you possibly can donate. Don't expect somebody else to do it for you. Uh, you can do that through the donate link in the video description or uh, by sending donations by PayPal to uh, by PayPal to uh, donations at wnae.org that's donations at wnae.org or you can vote and donate by PayPal, Zelle or GoFundMe th uh, through the link in the video description GoFundMe uh, uh, donations take a couple of days two or three days to actually get to us so uh, those that would like to help us with uh, today we actually need to raise at least $650 by the end of the day today uh, to uh, uh, keep our account from going into the negative and starting a chain reaction of returned items and fees. So we got sort of an emergency alert there. We need your help today. Okay. Um, also, don't forget to like our videos. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the uh, notification bell to get uh, notifications when new videos come out. Don't forget to let us know what you think in the comments, participate in the discussions in the comments, and share these videos with your friends on social media, etc. Okay, so we're talking today about the book of Ephesians and a, uh, a controversial couple of verses here. Uh, the King James Version says, For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make him in himself the two, one new man, uh, so making peace, or so making shalom. So that he might reconcile, he goes on verse 16, so that he might reconcile both onto God in one body, and so on. Okay, so let's let's look at this very carefully. And one of the things that uh, uh, you'll need to know, and we'll do more videos about this in the future, is that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic, not Greek. Uh, and then only translated into Greek and Latin and other European languages later. So we're going to be looking at the original Aramaic for this passage. Uh, it says, For he is our peace, or our shalom in Hebrew, or shlama in Aramaic, who has made both one and has, and then 
where the KJV says broken down the middle wall of partition between us. The word for broken down is the uh, Aramaic shara, uh, which is cognate to the Hebrew word, and it means to loose. It is a technical term that is used in the rabbinic literature to mean uh, that uh, when it talks about binding and loosing, that a activity is either prohibited or permitted. Okay, so this phrase broken down uh, could also mean that something is being permitted. And then it says the middle wall of partition between us. That word for middle wall in the uh, Aramaic is siyaga, <clears throat> which is an Aramaic word that has a Hebrew uh, cognate. And the, uh, the Aramaic word and its Hebrew uh, equivalent um, are used as a technical term in the Mishnah and in the, the Talmud. Another translation for the word is hedge. Um, so the word means hedge, and it's, um, like I said, it's used as a technical uh, term. For example, in Avot, Mishnah Avot 1 1, make a hedge about the Torah. And it's the same, it's the equivalent Hebrew word there for the Aramaic, Siaga. Okay. Um, Hebrew and Aramaic are very closely related languages. So the hedge, that, this idea about making a hedge around the Torah or about the Torah in the rabbinic literature uh, means that if the Torah, for example, says, this is just an allegory, if the Torah says, be in by midnight, the Torah, the hedge would be to be in by 11. A hedge is a rabbinic enactment that is a, uh, uh, a, a tradition that is designed to protect the actual Torah. So that if I'm trying to not violate certain commandments, in just trying to meet that exact border, then it's possible that on occasion I'll violate the commandment by coming in on the other side of the border. So the idea is to put a hedge around the Torah and so that if I violate the hedge, if I'm late, if I, if I, you know, somehow don't do something properly, I still haven't violated the actual Torah. Um, so, for example, if I'm supposed to say the Shema by a certain time, that's a perfect example. Okay, so hedge commandments are things, and Yeshua did this, for example, in Matthew chapter 5 on a number of, of matters. He, he uh, says, if the Torah says not to murder, but I tell you don't hate. Why? Because if you don't hate somebody in the first place, you're less likely to go the extra further step and murder them. So uh, Yeshua taught this uh, this very, very, uh, very much himself also in Matthew chapter 5 on a number of Torah matters. Okay. So we have here right next to each other two words that have special meaning in Judaism. To loose and a hedge. And to the Jewish mind reading this in Aramaic, this that immediately stands out to, to the, uh, the Jewish reader. And suddenly we see that instead of the King James Version uh, breaking down the middle wall, the Jewish mind sees loose the hedge of partition between us. And we'll find out who us is here in a minute. But loose the hedge of partition between us. And then verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of two one new man, thus making shalom. The shalom being parallel to the shalom in verse 14. Okay. So the Aramaic, this is a little bit ambiguous, and the Aramaic has been misunderstood by the Greek translator. 
there is a type of clause in Aramaic called the Dalit clause. It uh, is preface, it's a, a Dalit prefix on a word, and that Dalit prefix on a word is actually a, a preposition uh, in itself. Sometimes it's not always a preposition, sometimes it's a conjunction of sorts. At any rate, um, the word, the, this Dalit clause can mean who, which, that, or because. And it can make a big difference, or of, or of, okay? So, instead of the Torah of commandments, it should be here the Torah because of commandments. So that the actual Aramaic should be read the enmity and enmity by his flesh and the Torah because of commandments in his mandates he abolished. So it's enmity. There's only one thing being abolished here. It's enmity. Enmity is being abolished. It's being abolished by his flesh and the Torah because of commandments in his commands. So this has been greatly misunderstood by the Greek translator. Now, here's the important thing now. If we look back up to verse 11, verse 11 says, Wherefore, remember that you, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. So Paul's writing here in Ephesians, not to Gentiles, not to Ephesians as such, but rather he is writing to former Gentiles. And of course, former Gentiles are current Jews. These are proselytes to Judaism. They are formerly Gentiles. Remember this reading, remember, keep that in mind. Wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called the uncircumcised. Now, it's not saying that these uh, proselytes are called uncircumcised. Obviously, if they're proselytes, they are circumcised. But what he is saying is that they are former, is that former Gentiles, that Gentiles that they formerly were are called the uncircumcised by what that which is the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Uh, that at the time you were without Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, because they were Gentiles. Now they're not. Okay? So they were aliens. They were strangers. But now they're part of the commonwealth of Israel. Now they are in the covenants of promise. Um, have, formerly having no hope and without Elohim in the world. Formerly, but now they are former Gentiles. But now in Messiah Yeshua, you have sometime, you who sometimes were far off, are made near by the blood of Messiah. For he is our Shalom, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us or loosed the hedge between us having abolished having abolished in the uh, or actually literally uh, a better phrase is and enmity by his flesh in the Torah because of commandments in his commands he abolished okay so he abolished enmity by virtue of their becoming proselytes. They become one new man, okay? They, have, they become, uh, it says, to make in himself of two one new man, so making peace. The one new man. Now, how, what is this describing? This is describing the process between, I'm sorry, the process by which they become proselytes, by which they convert to Judaism. So it says they are former Gentiles, as 
we read in verse 11. So if verse 11 is correct, these are former Gentiles, then verse 15 is describing how these former Gentiles, having become Jews, are now one new man and the past they were two. They were separate from the Jews. Okay, now they are proselytes. They are former Gentiles. Now, I bet you never read it that way, and you probably just read over verse 11 and just totally missed the fact that verse 11 says that you who were in time past Gentiles, meaning they're not Gentiles anymore. All right? Okay, so uh, hopefully you learned something new about Ephesians chapter 2 and how to understand uh, verses 14 and 15 of Ephesians chapter 2 that are so poorly misunderstood and so commonly misunderstood. All right, so uh, again, I need to remind you to please donate to support these videos. You can do that by sending donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org or clicking on the donate link in the video description. Also, uh, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell so you'll get notified when new videos come out. Let us know what you think in the comments and share this video with your friends on social media. Until next time, everybody, Shalom.